Hello, everyone. Hello, fellow Christmassy bookish celebrants. It's the middle of December, and it is high time that I got my Christmas on, and so this is the video where it's all gonna happen. Welcome back to this highly festive episode of Reading in the Dark. I have been catching up on all of the old reads that I was slogging through uh, during the month of November. Um, and I'm happy to say that it's going really, really well. I have finished reading Dracula by Bram Stoker for the second time, which is a book that I love. The Wild Inside by Christine Carbo. And now I am powering through The Persian Boy by Mary Renault. Once again, enraptured by Mary Renault's writing, but that'll be done in a couple of days. I'm gonna try to power through that book and then get to some more Christmassy things because it is December, mid-December, and actually it's today is my brother's birthday, so I should probably call him. It's mid-December and now it is time for some more holiday-related things. I grew up celebrating Christmas and I know a lot of people on the booktube community do lots of like bookmas and vlogmas and lots of like Christmas related things and I've been enjoying watching that so I, I wanted to do a TBR for the remainder of December and I wanted to make it a Christmassy video and I also thought that it's not a Christmassy video without a little snow. So I decided I would make it snow here on Reading in the Dark. Welcome to December. The snow begun. Oh, look, there it is. The snow. That's so magical. I made that happen. Isn't that neat? I can't believe that happened. That's so funny. So, oh, I should put more snow on me so that I look Christmassy. I hope it doesn't look like dandruff. So now that I have made it snow because of the magic of technology, the next part of this video is going to be fun. I want to do a little Christmassy show and tell before I get into the bookish portion of this video. My house is decked out for Christmas. I have decorations everywhere and I'm not going to take the camera all around the house and show them to you. But what I am going to do is show you some of my favorite like little totems of Christmas, my little tokeny Christmassy things that are like scattered around my house and just do a little show and tell. So like the first thing, because I would like to take a drink of it right now, is this coffee mug, which I've had for many, many years. So this is one of my favorite Christmassy things. This is my Christmassy coffee mug that has all the little trees over. And it's had that for years, but I had two of these and one of them was dropped and destroyed and this one just got cracked. And I'm like, I refuse to get rid of this mug. They don't make it anymore. I think I got this at Starbucks years ago, but um, I just think it's so cute and so pretty and I love green and I love trees. And so this is my favorite mug and I have been just washing it and reusing it every single day. And I'm enjoying a lovely like cinnamony blend of coffee right now, which is my favorite. Then I just have all of these uh, Christmassy little votive candles around. This one actually still has a wick in it so I can actually burn this candle. A lot of them are empty and I have to dig out the remaining wax to put in new candles. But this is just like a really pretty little candle and I have red accent-y, candle-y things all over my like shelves and all over. Isn't it funny how we associate Christmas with winter even if we live in a place like Florida where winter doesn't really exist. I also have um, Mickey. Santa Mickey, Santa Mickey. I put him in my tree sometimes and he's just, he's got a little hat on and he's celebrating Christmas because he's Santa Mickey and he's happy and he's saying, I love you so much, yay, like that. And my dog thinks that this is for him and it's not. Speaking of Santa, the next thing I have, okay, so this is a salt shaker in the form of Santa Claus. I bought this at the grocery store several years ago. Obviously it came in a set with Mrs. Claus. However, I have been keeping my my turkey Thanksgiving themed salt and pepper shakers that my mom gave me on the back like lip of my stove for years. And so then when Christmas came around last year, I put Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus on the back lip of the stove as well. And then I pulled the stove out in order to replace the light bulb under the microwave and didn't move these. So they fell onto the tile floor and Mrs. Claus, I am sorry to announce, did not make the trip. But Santa, because he's Santa and magical, survived. So I still have Santa. Um, which is appropriate and he's just alone and I guess I'm gonna have to find him a new wife <laughs> But anyway, this is my Santa salt shaker that I don't use and that I don't drop on things, but he's cute Speaking of breakable things. I also collect snow globes This is gonna look crazy in front of the green screen. So this is um, my snow globe that has a polar bear with two babies on top and it's in front of trees and it's very, very pretty and it's very, very cute and I love it. And I, I actually collect these snow globes. I have snow globes starting from 2010, 2011. So I've got 
eight of these, plus I have one that my mom sent me. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah, yeah. Eight, that's math. I buy these at Target every year. Um, I've got eight of these snow globes around the house and they all play different things. I wonder what this one plays. It plays that New Year's song with the name that I can't say. So I'm not gonna play it because then it'll just never stop playing. That is the show and tell for my Christmassy life. And I'm going to, um, oh, it's really getting cold in here from all of this snow. My goodness, I'm gonna have to cut this video short so I can go get a coat. Just kidding. It looks like dandruff. I'm like putting dandruff on myself. So moving on to the, the final portion of this video is the normal portion of this booktube video, which is the portion of the booktube video that is about books. Um, for my Christmassy TBR, I, I could call this my December TBR, but it's like the middle of December. So I have a list of a few books here and I, I could maybe get through them all. Um, I probably won't though, but in whatever order, here are some books that I'm gonna read. I'll start with the ones that I actually physically have in my possession. So the first physical book that I'm gonna share with you is You Better Not Cry by Augustine Burroughs. This is a cute little volume. It's a little uh, hardcover. Um, this is a collection of memoir short stories, I guess. Um, Anecdotes by Augustine Burroughs, who's known for dry and running with scissors. And I haven't read anything he's written. So I have had this in my possession for years. This book has been sitting in my Christmas box. And when I open the Christmas box, I take this book and a couple of like really pretty Christmassy Martha Stewart Christmas magazines, and I put them in my glass top coffee table just to have as decoration. Because for so many years, I just wasn't reading. So the fact that a book is a thing that you can read didn't occur to me. And it just literally occurred to me today, this is a book one can read books. And so that's what I should do. So this is short. It's like, I don't know, 206 pages. It'll probably be really funny and really irreverent and fun. So I'm gonna read this. Uh, I'll probably sprinkle it in because it's like separate stories, I believe. And I just realized today, you know, if I got through Christmas while running a booktube channel and didn't read this book, that would be a crime. So I'm gonna read this. The next book, I don't know. I think I'll get to this because it's very, very short and I've been wanting to read it and it's being released, re-released uh, in the United States um, really, really soon. And that is Maglu by Otessa Moshbeck. This is a short story about a sailor who wakes up extraordinarily drunk, um, incarcerated after having apparently killed his best friend. He doesn't remember anything about it and it's sort of like he's slowly coming to and remembering things. This should be dark and grisly and maybe not the most pleasant read in the world. She's very obsessed with writing about people with addiction problems and alcohol problems. Um, but I'm a big fan of Otessa Moshfeg, and this is only about 118 pages. So 118 pages of Moshfeg glory. I'm sure I'll enjoy this. I'll probably read it because it's very, very short. And it's being re-released with a new cover um, really, really soon in January, actually. And so I thought I should finally read this and then maybe get a review up even before it's re-released. The next book that I physically have that I bought recently is The Christmas Stories of Charles... Dickens. So this obviously includes uh, Christmas Carol, but it also includes The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, The Battle of Life, and a story with the lovely title of The Haunted Man and the Ghost's Bargain. So this has all of those stories in it. He wrote a lot of stories after A Christmas Carol that were um, Christmassy or released during Christmas time, although not all of them are set at Christmas time. Um, and so these are all released in this really pretty slipcover. And I kind of hate slipcovers, to be honest. I think they're weird. But the book itself looks like this. It's just like, you know, a red cloth bound hardcover. Um, and this has lots of nice illustrations in it. The original illustrations that came with A Christmas Carol are in here. There are illustrations uh, various places throughout. So I'm gonna read all of these stories. Certainly A Christmas Carol I'm going to save until Christmas Eve because my tradition, even when I wasn't reading, was always to read A Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve, and it's obviously very short. So that is another physical book that I'm gonna read in the next couple of weeks. I also have some other books on my TBR that are, are eBooks. Um, the first book that I have been holding onto for a long time, which was on my uh, contemporary -thon TBR, which, good Lord, poor contemporary -thon TBR. It's still like lumbering along and hanging on on my Goodreads and I can't delete it until I read all the books that I chose for contemporary -thon, which was in September. Um, and the book I'm gonna read next to get off of that list, which is now finally dwindling down, is Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. This uh, is a book that tells the three separate stories that are somehow interconnected. Um, and one of them takes place towards the end of the year, like uh, the last week of December, and a man who was detained at the airport by counterterrorism people, and I'm sure it's just racism run wild. And um, 
Anyway, the, the story sounds, the, the book sounds very, very interesting and I've talked about it quite a bit, but I never read it. So Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday, I'm gonna hopefully tear through because it's not very long. I'm hoping to really enjoy it after all this time. I don't know how Christmassy it's gonna be, but um, I like the idea of these seemingly separate stories. There's three separate ones that are somehow turn out to be interconnected. One of them also is told in the form of an interview. So that'll be really interesting. Uh, the last book that I wanna read uh, this month is actually a book that is, uh, has like a read along going on and it's very, very wintry. And this is The Shuddering by Ania Alborn. This book actually has like a whole read along going on on Instagram, hashtag shuddering season read along. This is a story about a brother and sister who grew up in Colorado and had really happy memories at this house until their parents were divorced and then everything changed and now their house is about to be sold. So they gather with some of their closest friends and they go on a final snowboarding uh, trip into the winter wonderland of Colorado. And while they're out there, there's like a love rectangle happening and they're being stalked by some mysterious creatures in the woods. So it sounds like a little bit supernatural it's set during the winter and it's really, really popular at this time of year. The cover is a little bit Christmassy because it's white and red because the red is blood. But still it's white and red. Another good choice for this kind of vibe, if you enjoy, um, uh, investigator-centric uh, mysteries or thrillers would be a Tess Gerritsen book called Ice Cold. This is the eighth book, I believe, in the Rizzoli and Isles series. Ice Cold, it centers around uh, the medical examiner, Maura Isles, who somehow ends up stranded in this small town in the middle of the winter. This book actually starts a story arc and introduces a character that becomes important in the series and has continued through to the most recent book in the series, um, I Know a Secret. So if you're looking for another book like that, maybe Ice Cold, if you haven't read any Tess Gerritsen, would be a good first choice for you, although it is book eight in the series. So I'm very, very excited to read The Shuddering. I need to read a good thriller. And I've heard really, really great things about this author and I'm excited to love this book so that I can then read other books by Alborn. And then as I already mentioned, I'm also going to finish my December, well not finish my December, but I'm gonna finish my Christmassy period of December by reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I'm gonna read it on Christmas Eve because I always read it on Christmas Eve and it's just a really lovely, warm and cozy social commentary sort of story. It's spooky and it's Christmassy, obviously. And it's a perfect length to read on Christmas Eve. So I'm gonna definitely do that on Christmas Eve because I've had had a great time doing it in the past. And those are my reads for the rest of December. Now, I don't know that I'm actually going to completely succeed in finishing The Persian Boy, reading all five Christmas stories by Charles Dickens, Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday, You Better Not Cry by Augustine Burroughs, Maglu by Otessa Majfeg, and The Shuddering by Ania Alborn. But those are the books that I am choosing between and I hope I can get to as many of them as possible. If I'm running low on time, I'll probably cut out the ones that aren't Christmassy unless I'm just like not feeling the Christmassy vibe anymore. So I'm gonna kind of play it by ear. And I'm really looking forward to wrapping up the year and doing some end of the year review type things. But that is my Christmas TBR, as it were. I hope everybody is having a wonderful December in their reading. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you love this video and would like to see more content like this, it would be pretty fantastic if you subscribe to Reading in the Dark. And you can also hit that little bell icon, which will make sure that you're always notified when I post a new video. I'm trying to post as close to twice a week as I possibly can. And I think it's going really, really well. So I appreciate you being here. I'll see you next time, guys, in the next video. And until then, I will be here in the dark or the relative frigid cold reading. <laughs> Bye, guys.